talked about this before. Like sometimes to record one video, it used to take me all day, mm-hmm. yeah. all day. And that's like, so you have, sometimes you'll have to go through those struggles and you've, even I mean, you've talked about it too. Like you've done a few times and like, but the more you've been doing it, you're just like getting more comfortable. What about like, is it better to be perfect or just get it done? Just get it done. <laughs> that is awesome. Because you can perfect it later. Like, and you know what? But not even that. Like, you know, you're not perfect in person. Exactly. So why would you pretend to be perfect on camera? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm David Cinelli. This is DC Talks Podcast. And we got a special guest for you today for episode 33. With me is my lovely assistant slash realtor, Julia. Hello. I want to say your name. name. I know I'm going to screw it up. I know, I know how to say it off camera. Bylinski, did I say it right? No, you didn't at all. <laughs> I know, I know, because I say fine off camera. <laughs> you say it for the proper way. I'm Julia Bolinsky. Bolinsky. I know. I always say Bylinski for some reason. It's okay so if it's easier for you to remember that it's B I L I N S K Y. Then... I know it just messes me up every. It, it's true because every I correct myself all the time. And I knew as soon as I said it on camera, I was going to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> So I, obviously, so Julia, you came to work with me just over a year and a half ago, I guess, right? And your role has changed along the way. So you're now, uh, so our assistant Elise is on mat leave and it's a great opportunity for you to jump in now. You're doing both learning as a realtor, as a younger realtor coming in and now being the assistant and still doing uh, real estate as well. So doing like dual duty. So this is going to be pretty inspiring for, for people to figure out you know, how you got here and, you know, especially yourself at a young age. You know, you're, am I allowed to say your age? You just turned 25 years old I just 25 yeah <laughs> still a baby <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and i love that fact is you bring a, like a lot of energy into into the business and the dc family loves you for that um so let's talk a little about yourself like how you started and how you became a realtor because this obviously wasn't the path that you had set when you got out of high school no you're right it wasn't the path that i originally took when i got out of high school um when I got out of high school, you know, the main thing that I thought about was, okay, I can't take a year off. I have to go to university for something. And that had to do with also my parents pushing me to just kind of go straight into university. Don't wait. Um, so I was kind of- you find of, that it's because our European backup, that they never had the education that we had. And that's why they kind of forced us to do that. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Which is, you know, it's fine because- you know, all your parents want for you. They just want to see you succeed in life. Right. So I understood that. Uh, So I started thinking of different things in business, what I could be doing. I knew that I was always a personable person. I loved talking to people, loved figuring out problems, problem solving. So one of my sisters suggested that I go into HR. And <laughs> mind you, in grade 12, I had no idea what HR was. I didn't know what HR was until I was uh, my first big boy job. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, HR started becoming a big thing while I was at school for it. So when I was when I went to university for HR, I was learning about how you had to have a special designation, how you had to be part of, you know, um, some kind of group to get benefits in HR. It was, it started becoming a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you just, just cause you get a degree in HR doesn't mean you actually can work in HR is what you're saying. Exactly. It's more so like you have to get a certificate and then you have to be part of this group. Kind of like how real estate, how you, you're part of RICO and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a special designation for that in HR. Mm-hmm. And so my first. Really? Two- so what's it like HR, like criminal number one or what do they call them? Because I can't stand HR. <laughs> I, just, I, can't, I can't stand nice. HR either. I cannot. No, so like what's the, uh, is there a special name for it, a designation or something they have for it? Um, like- so when you can get your H, uh, HRPAC, which is a certificate. Mm. Um, you can be a part of the HRPA group. Um, I don't know too much about it because I just, once I graduated, I had nothing to do with HR. Uh, so the first two years was actually really nice in, in, in university because I learned about accounting, marketing. It was very broad. Well, it's essentially business. HR is business. They, they made us take a during our MBA and my undergrad, we had to take HR courses. So absolutely. Yeah. So it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And then my last two years, I dove right into HR and that's when I was like, 
I wish I didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest drawback for you? Um, I think the biggest drawback was just honestly, like, ha- like thinking about climbing the corporate ladder. I think that was the biggest part for me. For just HR or just business in general? I think business in general. I think the way that I wanted to have my life path like go, I was like, I don't want to climb a corporate ladder. Mind you, I have two older sisters that are in corporate and they love it. One of my sisters is an accountant. My other sister is in marketing and they both love it. Uh, But for me, I kind of took after my parents' role. My parents are both entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. and I kind of followed in their footsteps in that way. Um, And I always just geared towards being an entrepreneur. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So then fast forward. So how did real estate start for you then? Because So you're in HR. You're newly graduated. Did you even work in HR? I did. I was an HR assistant for a little bit. Okay. Um, I had a summer job as an HR assistant, but while I was getting my uh, degree, I was also working at a real estate office as an admin. Mm. And so I worked there part time. And over the years, I started to learn more about the contracts in real estate, all of the paperwork. I was, you know, registering offers. I was um, drafting MLS data sheets for agents. And I kind of really got into it in that point. I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was funny sitting at the admin desk. I always wondered what it'd be like on the other side. I'd always see agents walk in and they, they honestly, it felt like they were like little you superstars. You seduced by real estate. And <laughs> now you realize it's not all glitz and glamour. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Uh, that's so funny. And then, so how fast did you, like, so then you started to work with, is that when you want to start to work for the rec team in, uh, with Royal Page Signature or how did that work out? Yeah. So right after I graduated, I actually got my license. Uh, I started gearing towards getting my license. Before we get into that too, like what were your parents at this time? After you got your, your degree, I mm-hmm. didn't want to jump the cord. Like, were your parents supportive of you not doing HR? Like, how does that work? So, again, from immigrant parents, I don't know if like a lot of people like, well, there's a lot of like, us here like that come from Europe that get a really strong parents kind of pushing us or in a certain way. Um, mm-hmm. My parents weren't like this, but like, well, you hear of a lot of it. Like, oh, you're in a degree, you have to this, you have to get a sound job, you have to be like, w- once you got your degree, were they saying, okay, what are you going to do now? And then when you transition to real estate, what did they say? They asked me like to just if I wanted to try just, just to try corporate life, like Mm. just get a nine to five, try it out. You don't know what you're talking about. That kind of sense. Um, typical answer. Yeah. Yeah. And you're only 24. Yeah. Like or 20 something years old. How do you know what you want to do? Right? Exactly. Well, I was 20, 21, 22 at the time. Right. When I graduated Mm. 20. So I really didn't know myself either. Yeah. Right. And so it's not funny Like you're 18. They make you take a course or something for four years, which you don't even know anything. Life are like, oh, so this is something you do the rest of your life. I'm like, you're 18. Like, come yeah. on. It's crazy. If I could go back, I probably maybe I would have gone back to university, but maybe for something different mm-hmm. or maybe not even at all. Yeah. Maybe I just would have gotten my license. We have this conversation with our, our with about my, Natalie and I talk about, about our kids and you as well. We're like. We're going to court encourage them, but they don't have to go to university. It's not a like, it's good to have an additional education route saying that too. But I also don't want them to go and just waste money and go like do like a degree, which they'll never use that and just spend all this money just, just to get a degree and then never use it, never really learn anything or loaf through it. Like that's not, that's not the purpose, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's what was happening with you, I feel, right? Like you're just, yeah. as much as you had a good degree, now you're just like stuck, right? Right. So after that, I had a summer job. Uh, but I also was interested in getting my license at the time right. for real estate. And did you tell your parents? I brought up the idea to my parents um, and they suggested, they're like, you know, you just paid off your university. Are you going to start paying more money to get another designation? And I, I told them, I was like, you know what? I'll never know unless I try. Good I'll never you. know. So. They took my word for it and they said, okay, get your license. Maybe it'll be a a good idea for you. So fast forward, I got my license. I've been licensed for two and a half years now. Um, And I don't regret it. I I love real estate. I 
love the fact that I got into it and I wish I had got into it sooner. Yeah. So, and you went, you worked for one of the bigger teams. We have a Royal Page signature, like they're yeah. basically they're broker, huge brokers within our brokerage, basically Yeah, and a little bit different than we have our environment here. And it's like, but I'm glad that you actually went with a team lead and to learn little things. Yeah. 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 I was on the rec team for a short time, but I was, I learned so many things from uh, Simeon, even just still watching their podcasts today. Like I always learn um, something new from any agent Mm -hmm. at Royal LePage or anywhere. That's awesome. So now we're going to talk a little bit more of like, now what's life really like? You're licensed. You come work with me besides being the, the dual rule. Do you find it hard now, like shutting off your personal life from the real estate life? Is it like, is that a difficult thing? And how do you find there's a lot of stress in your life as well? Yeah, I think some at times it's definitely difficult because realistically we're on our phones all the time, right? So if your client who is also your friend is messaging you at 10.30 p.m. and they know you're awake, you're kind of replying. Because they can see your stories <laughs> on Instagram right? now. Yeah, you can't hide anymore. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes it is hard to kind of shut off you know it's so easy to access our mls system just our password you log in and you can look at a property and Mm -hmm. okay let's book this for tomorrow eight o'clock showing Mm -hmm. you know so sometimes it is hard um especially when other agents are also working late as well Mm -hmm. you feel a little more obligated to reply to them right away yeah instead of shutting off and going to sleep yeah, it was a hard lesson we have to learn in life, whether you, especially as an entrepreneur, because when you have a nine to five, most of the time, most people, when they leave their office or they, if they're working at home, they turn off the light, they can actually leave their work. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not always the case we have as realtors because like our business is basically my office is my car. Like, mm-hmm. this, sure, we have a place here, but I'm in my car most time. We're always on our phone. So it's very, very hard to shut off. But you have to, you have to learn a mechanism in which you just can't be reached about like now if you're calling me at 10 30 at night my phone goes into silent and i'm like unfortunately unless it's an emergency like mm-hmm. it's not gonna happen obviously if we're working on an offer so like we've seen that where it's gone into the night then your phone's on but that's a different case but if you're just calling me to say you want to see a listing we can wait till the morning you yeah. know like that's like- yeah. a lot of gurus online also talk about how you know in entrepreneurship you have to work 13 hour days and it's not just a 9 to 5 and if you want to build your empire then you have to sacrifice a lot of the time um and i think a lot of other entrepreneurs see that and they get worried and they get sucked into working those 12 hour days yeah but then you're not productive yeah well you need rest you need rest. And that's one thing. That's a big part of real estate. It's like you need to make it vacations, which you have a vacation coming up. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's a big part of it. If you don't, if you don't take some time to take your foot off the gas and enjoy your family, there's no point in doing this. Yeah. You know, I've tried to instill that with you um, and, and a lot of people too. Like, so knowing that, is that also curb like your, your work day, your work weeks? Like, how does it work for you? Like, how do you stay on track and stay scheduled? Mm-hmm. Because again, People don't get that. Like when you're an entrepreneur, you're doing what we do. They think we can wake up any time in the day. We can go do any showings. You're just kind of like, oh, yeah, I can take my kid to soccer. I can go do this and this. And there's our, our day is just free. That's ours all the time. Is that the case? That is so not true. It's <laughs> false information. And you know what? Maybe for some people that is true. I can only speak for myself. Um, but. I think the most important thing, um, and I've definitely learned that from, I've definitely learned this from you, is routine. You have to build a routine. And I'm glad that I never took a year, two years off. I constantly stayed in school because it's helped me develop a routine in my life that I'll never get rid of. So waking up early, going to the gym, doing a workout, eat, shower, then get on your computer and start your day mm-hmm. and make sure that you're taking breaks throughout the day. So if you're on the computer and you're doing work for two hours straight, okay, now it's time to get off, take a 30 minute break, sit outside, mm-hmm. read a book, eat lunch. Um, and you just have to structure your day. You have to find what works for you. Yeah. And I'd say if you treat it like a job, that's what I'm saying. You don't just treat our job like a hobby you have to treat like a real job Mm -hmm. and you'll be more successful again staying on schedule did you play sports growing up as a kid all the time yeah i played professional soccer i played professional volleyball um and that's also helped me keep a schedule as well so you saw how i was leading into that so what what were some of those attributes that 
maybe you would tell other people have their kids into sports that helped you that maybe in today's life. Yeah. So I think honestly, playing sports while growing up, it's helped me keep a schedule where I have to know when to, this is when I was younger, when I have to do my homework, I have to do it right when I finish school because at seven o'clock I have a practice for two hours. And then when I get home, I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. Or if it's tournament days, like I have to make sure all of my projects are complete before the weekend. And that's something that I keep in mind even in today's like my work day, right? Um, even if it's things for you, I try to make sure that I get everything done during the week so that when the weekend comes, me and you are both, both not stressing about anything. Right. Yeah, right? that's the idea. And how about like interaction with other people and other players? Do you find that that's helped? Like, because there's different personalities when you're on a team, also having a coach and managers, not to mention players and players on the other team, assholes on your own team. They'd like, we yeah. all have those pricks that we all grew up yeah. with. Yeah. For how, sure, yeah. How did that help? Um, it just honestly, like the team building when I was younger helped me a lot with my networking today's day. You just got to, you have to talk to people, you just got to be nice, mm -hmm. communicate, find something that you guys both have in common. And that's how I find that real estate is today mm -hmm. between other agents. We're not competing. I don't find that other agents and myself are competing against each other. Yeah, it's a huge competition out there. There's 80,000 agents that want, you know, one listing, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to offers and negotiation, it's not really a competition. It's just let's work together to get this deal done. Let's see how we can both help our clients in the best way to make this smooth sailing. Was there something that surprised you about the industry once you got your license that you just weren't prepared for? And how did you react to that? I think one of the biggest things was the amount of agents. Like I was really surprised when I found out the number of agents, um, mostly because you see like the big names out there repeatedly. So you think, how can there be 80,000 agents in the GTA? You know what surprises me every single time I jump into an Uber, how many of them have a real estate license? Yeah. It's like almost everyone has like, or like, it's funny. It's like they're doing all, and which is funny because it's it's part of the hustle, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, like, like and, you know, when I talked about this before, he goes, you ever turn off being a realtor? I'm like, no, it just comes up in conversation. And I'm not one of those people that jumps into Uber and just sits there on my phone and it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Unless Natalie and I are fighting, which happened before. But anyway, most of the time I'm talking to the, to the Uber driver and then like, I swear to God, anywhere from 50 to 70% of them have their license. And they're like, I guess I get in the car and they, they never call to, you know, to find out how to get further in their career. But it's funny. Like it's, yeah. so yeah, like that is an aspect you just, you never, like you just don't understand. It's like, it's like 80,000, I guess. Yeah. 80, and I think in Ontario, there's just over 90,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in our real, like in our area, like in GTA, I think there's 70,000, but it goes over, it's probably got to be more. Yeah. I think there's 70,000 plus another 30,000 outside. It's crazy. Yeah. It also surprised me when you showed me the statistics behind it of how many agents, you know, do a certain amount of deals per year. And it's like, ah, okay. There's that 60 Do you remember the percentages? Off top, Matt? I have it in my, my, my listening presentation, so I know. <laughs> I think it was like 10%. The top 10% make 90% of the income. Yes. But what I get is that. So over one third of realtors are part-timers. Mm -hmm. So those are the Uber drivers. Those are people who have it. Like my brother-in-law, one of them who has it for because he wants the benefits. Um, so... Those guys, so about one third, they do zero to one deals a year. Then the next increment, it's when people are doing two to nine deals a year. Mm -hmm. That's another 54 to 55% of a year that are doing two to nine deals. And I always say this, that what helps with me when I do a listing presentation, like, so think about that. The higher echelon, it's 88% of agents are doing under nine deals a year. Mm -hmm. So even at the higher echelon, that's nine deals. That means you're only doing a deal every month and a half, roughly. That's insane. Yeah, roughly. So it's like, so I don't know about your job, but how how good would you be at your job if you only did every month and a half? And okay. they just looked at me and like, then here's my stats. <laughs> you know, I just kind of throw it in there too. Uh, so working with somebody like as a mentor, mm -hmm. has that helped you? Like, for example, like, because I'm like basically your second one, but it's in there too. Like, we, well, you worked with rec team, then now you're working with me as well. Was there, is there something that drew you to being as like a mentor as opposed to going on on your own? Like, what was your, 
What were your thoughts about that? Yeah. So when I first got into real estate, when I just got my license, just fresh out of the school, I felt really lost, you know, because in the, in school, they teach you how to do everything legally, how to do the paperwork. And that's all great and nice. But that's do, all they teach you. <laughs> do they teach opinion. you how to market yourself? Do they teach you how to network? They don't really teach you anything about that. So I I was afraid when I first finished school. Well, especially you see, like you're, you're coming in a female, young female in this industry, right? Did you also find that that also was a little bit scary as well? Or are you finding that the industry treats you different as a young female? I think in some ways, like, yes. Um, I think your confidence gets a little shifted when you are, you know, maybe talking to an older agent that does like that just looks down on you, but he doesn't mean to look down on you. But well, then you have the ones that totally like, listen, sister, I've been doing this for 50 years. You listen to what I say. I'm like, yeah, go screw yourself. Yeah, I've heard that <laughs> I, a number of times, yeah. a number of times. And you're going to get that. Like, I, I hate to say if those other agents, like I still get it too. It's like, you're going to get it for another 10, 15 years. Yeah. It's just, that's just the way it is. You can be doing this game for 30 years and they find that they're, they just have some superiority over you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like, that's, yeah. But you know what? The the age, I find that the age shouldn't matter. And I'll tell you why. I think the age shouldn't matter because real estate is changing every day, right? The way that we do transactions, the paperwork, like the new um, paperwork that got introduced to us not too long ago with FinTrack, right? Right. Things are changing so fast. Different softwares are being introduced that you have to it's almost a part-time job to just keep up with those different things, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay, you've been in the industry for, you know, 30, 40 years, but are you keeping up with the trends? Are you keeping up with the news that's constantly coming out? Are your negotiation skills still fresh? How do you find with social media, are you a little surprised at how much of a, of a role it plays in our industry? Yes and no. I knew that real estate with real estate or any entrepreneurship, you have to put yourself out there. Um, the extent and the work behind it, no. Um, yeah, people don't get that. Like when we post, you post how many videos of mine a week? Seven. No, more than that. Because we do the podcast ones too. So we post right. seven, 10, and then, so that's 17. Plus we do like Catterday. Yes. And then we have all the posts from Royal Page. So you're posting something like three times for me a day. Yes. And then on top of that, my real estate page. Right. Yes. So just for me alone, you're posting all that kind of stuff too. And you also have to come up with topics and things like kinds of constantly captions. change captions, yeah. editing. So, so it's not as simple as like, I know it's not hard to do, but once you get into the routine, I guess is that the hardest thing too. But I, I just think people look at it daunting. Like if so, if somebody came up to you and said, Julie, I want to get into, I like what you do for Dave and I like what you do for yourself with the real estate. What would you suggest for them to do then? Like, what would be your suggestion? Like, I want to do videos, but I don't know where to start. You know what? And I tell myself this, and you tell me this all the time. Just start with anything. Just start with you recording yourself, giving um, a piece of information in the real estate world, or give a personal piece of information on sleep or how to make a routine better. Um, And you just start there. Uh, just making the post and then then you can start adding all the captions and learning once you get more comfortable with it right i think that's yeah i don't think it's not like we started doing this right from the bat like you and i have changed things on the fly mm-hmm. so the other thing we you don't see what julia does behind the scenes guys is that she's actually working and i'm like okay maybe then I'll, I'll something i'll find a tiktok i'll send you to like what if we do this are you send me to let's try this like even lately we're like we're starting the beginning of videos much different now we're now we're asking questions and like trying to capture people that way i think it's helping as well like small tweaks yeah but you're again constantly improving where do you get most of the, the stuff you're reading are, are, you, are you getting just stuff from instagram and, and tiktok is that what you're kind of getting most of your media do you or do even people look online to look that stuff up to make your things more appealing or has that become like old hat um, I think people are still looking at on the internet. I think a lot of, you know, Instagram creators are turning into turning uh, more towards reels mm-hmm. to um, show other people uh, use this sound and use it at this time, this time, this time with a nice hook at the beginning to get more views. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can easily go on Instagram, TikTok and find that other creators are showing you how to do these things. 
did you see there's one company had this one guy he's like find the creator that you like in the industry you like copy all their stuff there's an app you can put it into they spit out all the stuff for you and you just kind of record and do the same thing like and you can copy 100 percent of the creator that you like all their stuff that is insane. <laughs> and it's all through the AI and all this other shit too. It's like, yeah. it's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I would say the number one thing, like if you are going to start creating content, um, confidence. Confidence is probably the number one thing. And that's something that I've, I think, struggled with as well. Like just keeping confidence because, you know, when you put yourself on the internet, it's so easy to get worried about what people are saying about you, what people are thinking about you. How um, many buttons you have open on your shirt like Owen did like last couple weeks ago yeah. and his little Chester was hanging out? Yeah, <laughs> handling <laughs> objections. Yeah, it's it's tough. So yeah. you really have to learn to kind of mute all that out and stay true to yourself, of course, and just keep that confidence up. That's yeah, it's great advice. Yeah, especially coming in. And again, something you struggle with every day. Like I think people just think I just go in there and like, you know, now I just go in and just do videos and run a bang. And I still have to record sometimes three, four, five times. But we talked about this before. Like sometimes to record one video, took, it used to take me all day, mm-hmm. yeah. all day. And that's like so. You have to, sometimes you'll have to go through those struggles. And you've even I mean, you've talked about it too. Like you've done it a few times. And like, but the more you've been doing it, you're just like getting more comfortable. What about like, is it better to be perfect or just get it done? Just get it done (laughs) because you can perfect it later. Like, and you know what? But not even that, like, you know, you're not perfect in person. Exactly. So why would you pretend to be perfect on camera? Yeah. Like, you know, the super polish, all that stuff too. And people look at them like, yeah, I'm super polished. It sometimes comes across as super fake. Yeah. Yeah. Just be yourself. Like, again, be true to yourself, be natural. Um, And yeah, just get it out there because you can always tweak things. You can always change things. Uh, I find that a lot of people, even myself sometimes, I'll look at different um, creators and see, oh my God, this editing is done so well and I want my video to look this perfect or I don't want to post anything at all. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking on my page and I'm like, I haven't posted anything in two weeks. So where's my engagement? So just post it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, are there your go-to apps you have when you do want to do like captions and editing and that kind of stuff? What is, do you have any apps you go to? CapCut. Yeah. If you, I find that like sometimes people say if you want to get more engagement and if you're doing just an Instagram video, mm-hmm. uh, do the typing and the editing on the Instagram app. That helps. Or TikTok, mm-hmm. whatever you use. Um, yeah. CapCut's yeah. been a really big one for editing. It's funny, funny, I think too, like one of my more granular ones we've posted lately, it was like when I was talking about your partner, mm-hmm. but it was, I had the wrong camera because it was this way because I wanted to see it, make sure I was getting it. And that wasn't the best shot. It has the most views we've had. And like everything else is like super clean and cut and all that. And this one was just like, oh, it's a little great. And I'm like, but it's performed well. And that goes to just exactly what you're saying. Like just something's put out there. Sometimes you can't repeat. You can't put, you know, you, you can't put the magic or the, sorry, the, uh, the toothpaste back in the tube. Sometimes the magic is there and you can't put it back in the box. So just go with it. Sometimes you post a shitty video and people like not a shitty video, but a shitty quality. And sometimes you just get, it resonates with people. Maybe they're like, well, why does this look like this? And they'll post that again. Don't do it on purpose all the time, but sometimes if it's all you got post and then you'd be surprised some of the engagement. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. I think we had like like 2,200 views or something in the first like week or something. And I was like, holy God, the first day was just blowing up. But even Instagram's like, well, this one's performing well for you. I'm like, what did you do here? I'm like, I did everything wrong and it still worked out okay. You know? So it's sometimes it, you just you just don't know, right? And you don't, there's going to be sometimes in a video something that pops up, which you don't expect to be anything special but it'll resonate with people and it'll get passed on and it'll just go so if you're if you're being true to yourself and not trying to copy somebody Mm -hmm. that'll come across and then next thing you know like that's that's what people will resonate with and you might get crazy amount of views and it'll go viral or do something like that yeah 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 Yeah. well it's been interesting conversation believe it or not we're starting to wrap up it's getting close to that time um so in our closing remarks um if somebody's looking like young female maybe struggling university or thinking about going to university, is there some sort of advice you'd like to give them from your, from your perspective that could help? Yeah. If you're struggling and you, you know, you're at a point in your life where you don't know if you want to do, let's say whatever you're in university for, or maybe a job that you're working at. um, I would say 
to take a step back, really think about it, um, try and find yourself, try and find who you really think that you are. I mean, we are changing every day. We're changing every month, every year. Um, but try and find your roots and what you really think that you want to do. And I would just say, just remember, like, just because you're on one path doesn't mean that you're going to be on this one path forever, that this one decision that you make can change your whole life. Mm. So, And do you find that, do you think there's a misconception with people looking at realtors online and what the actual, like, with like we're not telling them to become realtors if you want to, like, too, but do you think there's a big misconception? So like, well, she's saying maybe, maybe I'll just be a realtor. Is there something like, you know, where you're kind of shocked of like what happened in reality, what you would see, like maybe a, what's it, selling sunset? <laughs> oh, yes, for sure. Selling sunset versus real life real estate is totally complete opposite. It's not all glamour and glitz. Um, it's dirty work. Is, it's dirty well, those, work as Those well. people don't even really make those, like those girls on the show don't even make those commissions. It's all fake. Well, are they real agents? Even? I don't even know. I don't even know. Right. So I think and and I think it's funny as well. A lot of people think that real estate is glamorized. Like they think, oh, well, all you do all day is drive around and make a bunch of reels. And are you an influencer? Are you a real estate agent? It's like, no, like we do that. But on top of that, do you know how much paperwork we have to go through? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Love it. Yeah. All right. So if somebody wants to follow along with you and follow your journey, what's the best way for them to reach out in order to find you? Uh, you can follow my Instagram, Realtor, Or is it sure? JuliaBolinsky.Realtor? Well, we'll find well, you. Well, you can find me tagged in David Chinelli's <laughs> page. <laughs> and if you're looking for spots to find this podcast, yes, if you go on my Instagram, my, link, uh, my LinkedIn tree is there. It has all of the podcasts there. So that's probably the best way. If you don't know how to follow and find me there, it's David V. Chinelli underscore Realtor. And then, yes, you can find Julia. I usually tag her and she hates it, but I tag her in most of my videos, but she'll be there for you to follow along. Well, thanks again, Julia, for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We'll see you next week.